Ever since Dragon Age Origins came out back in 2009. Wait, 2009? That can't be right. Is it? Fuck, I feel old. Ever since it came out in 2009, people have been wondering about quite a lot of things, and those questions are still unanswered today. On the contrary, there are even more today than there were in 2009, thanks to Exodus, Inquisition and especially Trespasser. Where do Darkspawn come from? Is the Maker real? Does Solus polish his head? Is swooping actually that bad? Well, thanks to the cult-like community, with amazing members such as Erevas and Jarnin, some of those questions have found answers. In theory, at least. Before we begin, let me give thanks to Jarnin for allowing me to make videos using his work. I'll try to do it justice. Right then, get your drinks and buckle up. You're in for a wild ride. We begin with the Fate. A chaotic realm of dreams and memories that exists alongside Thedas. The Fade is the home of spirits. Nothing there is physically real, there are only memories and emotions. Magic also hails from the Fade, since anything goes there. It's the same with our dreams. In reality I can throw fireballs, but when I dream, I'm able to roast a couple thousand people to... Um, the impossible, namely magic, suddenly becomes possible in the Fade. But there is another realm that exists together with Thedas and the Fade. We went there ourselves in the descent. The Abyss, or Void as it is also known. Unlike the Fate, the Abyss is an actual physical place, deep below the surface of Thedas. It's sometimes called the Void, because that's what it actually is. There are literal voids there in the form of caves and caverns. Everything there is in perfect order. The Abyss is inhabited by the Titans and their Shabritol servants. These two places, the physical and the spiritual, meet in the middle, on Thedas, where they create life. Right then, if you spend the barest minimum of attention to the story of the games, that information is nothing new. But there is another theme that is woven through all three and a half games. Something that isn't as blatantly stated as the fate and the abyss. The mastery over, or the servitude to others. Jarnin gives a nice example of this. Take spirits. They are in service to their purpose. When that purpose is kept from them or perverted, they turn into demons. Another one of Shabrit Hall. They are connected to the Titan through its blood, delirium they drink to survive. When that bond is shattered, which we will come to later, they turned into the first of the dwarves. Now we have the people, meaning elves and spirits, who are in unwilling service to the Evanuris. When their laws are broken, or one refuses to follow them, they become forgotten or forbidden ones. Combining this with how life came to be, we can get a decent understanding of how history shaped Thedas into the world we know today. The Fate and Abyss clash, creating life on Thedas, which immediately splits in two factions. This is likely the war that Solas mentioned, which resulted in the rise of the Elven Gods. Given that their power in the form of natural magic hailed from the Fate, the Avenirus went against the stream by forcing their own version of order on the people. This forced system resulted in the Forgotten Ones, who refused to serve other Elves. They knew that the Avenirus were nothing more but mortal mages, which is why Elgarnan wants them wiped out. Knowing that their gods were just like them could turn the elves against them, but the problem was that the Avenirus, just like the Forgotten Ones, were drawing strength from the same place, the Fate, so they had to seek out other forms of power. When word of elven cities being destroyed by earthquakes spread to the Pantheon, Mithal, the Great Protector, true to her name, went there with the intention of stopping them. She gathered an army, which proved to be necessary, and went underground. A aforementioned army was needed, because as I said before, despite its name, the Void is not empty space. The Shabritol are tasked with protecting the Titan at all costs. Mythal and her people managed to defeat not only them, but the Titan as well, thus ending the earthquakes that threatened the elven cities. She, and Fen Harel, who was likely with her the entire time, were faced with another problem now, however. Defeating the Titan severed its connection to the Shabritol. No longer enthralled, they regained their personality and became the first of the dwarves. Given that she had the title the Great Protector, Mythal couldn't let those now aimless creatures succumb to their fate. After all, she was responsible for their impending doom. Solas as well is shown to care greatly for people, when he's not actively planning genocide at least. So instead of leaving the dwarves to their fate, the two of them conscript them to mine the defeated titan's blood, Lyrium. This allowed the dwarves to survive, but also gave the Avenirus more power than they could imagine. See, up until then, there was only magic in its natural form, from the Fate. Now in possession of Lyrium, the concept of blood magic was introduced to them, allowing spells to be fueled and enhanced by using the inherent power of blood, either in the form of Lyrium or someone else's. With this newfound power, they expanded their empire all over Thedas, and perhaps even beyond. 
It also allowed them to create the Illuvians and their own pocket dimension, the Labyrinth, or Crossroads, whatever you want to call it. Now, as I mentioned before, Mythal and Solas, the two lovebirds, saved the dwarves from a certain death. In return, they started to build statues in their honor and worshipped them. This proved to be quite troublesome, because they faced another problem later on. Harvesting blood from someone that is dead or defeated only works for a certain time. And if you build your empire on Lyrium, facing a shortage of that means you're fucked. The Avengers encountered exactly that. The mine eventually ran dry, and after hearing of the shortage, they went into the Lyrium mine, which Methal and Solas were treating as their own domain by that point. On their descent, get it, because they dis- <laughs> On their way down there, they walked past statues of Methal and Fenarel. None of them, however. The dwarves are worshipping the two of them, not the entire pantheon. It's possible that they knew of the existence of the other gods from Imshale. Given that Imshale knows a great deal about how to grow red lyrium, it's safe to say that he was banished there by Big Daddy Elganon. Speaking of the devil, Daddy Anger issues confronted his wife. Because their empire would likely collapse without Delirium, the leader of the Avenuris likely intended to use the dwarves in a blood magic ritual in order to revive the titan long enough to replenish Delirium. The Great Protector wouldn't have that. She didn't save them just to sacrifice them later on, so the other gods lashed out at her, wounding but not killing her. Killing Mithal would have gained them nothing, so instead they merged her broken body into the titan's heart. It worked, but not the way they intended. Do you know why the Shabrit Tall attack on sight? They are tasked with protecting the Titan from the impure. Mithal, despite her reputation as a goddess, was nothing more than an elf. Life on Theta sparked from the two realms clashing together, so the elves are creations of both the Fate and the Void. By merging Mithal into the heart, they introduced an impure life form into a being that is able to shape the world, and tainted the whole damn thing. This is the origin of the Red Lyrium and the Blight. Realizing that what they had done was a real shit idea, the Avenirus collapsed the mine, hoping that that would settle things. The dwarves fled in panic, but before they left, they grabbed a chunk of Red Lyrium and carved it into an idol of their former goddess. They remained on the ground, however, as Algonan would have genocide for breakfast should they set foot topside, which explains the dwarven fear of the sky. Eventually, those that took the idol with them built a taik with statues of her and a temple to pray to their former goddess. We visit this temple ourselves in Exodus. The primeval taik is one of the few relics of the dwarves from the ancient time of Arathan. Other dwarves eventually went on to create the dwarven empire, seemingly unaware of the events that led to their origins. That's the theory, at least. Let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, if you enjoyed it, subscribe. Or don't. If, for some reason, you want to contact me, send me a PM on Reddit. And if you want news, updates and cake pictures, follow me on Twitter.